Hey y'all, my name is Briley Casanova and I am a Certified Mental Performance Consultant or CMPC for short. Um, so in my work, I frequently get questions from parents about how they can best support their gymnast or even if their child is in another sport, um, how, you know, they go through fear or a dip in confidence on specific skills, um, like what are things they can do? Those are common questions that I get. Um, and I understand that these parents have good intentions, um, but sometimes too much of a good thing isn't always a good thing. And what I'm really referring to is the topic of today's podcast, which is um, to buy or not to buy gymnastics equipment for home use. And I guess I, I could preface that a lot of my views today that I'm going to share with you can translate to other sports too. I do think maybe there are other sports that maybe you could get away with a couple of things, but the whole premise and mindset and, and just understanding that I have is really not in favor of, of that. And I will explain why later. So this is kind of my little dis disclaimer um, before getting too far in um, and following my, my script, my notes. Um, today's going to be pretty note heavy, but I just want to put this out there um, before anybody, you know, we, we get deeper into this. So while I can't stop anyone, whether you're a parent, a guardian, a coach, um, you know, from doing what what they think is best for their child or youth athlete. I, I just want to state, you know, that based on my professional mental performance experience, you know, this in this field, in this space, um, growing beyond my years as an athlete, uh, just getting a lot of experience seeing, you know, those that have succeeded, those that have not quite succeeded or achieved what they wanted to achieve. Um, I just can't really ethically at least go out of my way to recommend that a parent goes out and buys gym equipment to basically build a gym at their house or have have these things at their house. I just can't fully confidently support that strategy. And again, I will discuss all of the reasons why shortly. Now, if you're already in a different mindset, I just encourage you to keep an open mind and at least listen to my perspective before making that leap towards such a huge purchase. And on the flip side, myself, I want to make it clear that I'm also open to my mind being changed. While yes, I do have pretty strong opinions on this topic right now, if someone can ever come along the way and convince me that it's otherwise, you know, a smart, productive, and overall net, net helpful thing to have uh, gymnastics equipment in the home on a long-term basis, then I'm, I'm open to hearing about it. Um, but in the meantime, this is, you know, the stance that I'm choosing to take. I feel like it's the most ethical um, in speaking to the athletes that I, that I work with. Um, and, and obviously, like I said, I'll, I'll talk about why. And, and again, reiterating today is going to be very note heavy. Uh, so just please bear with me as I want to really thoughtfully, um, share my perspective. I've put a lot of time, uh, brain bites, energy, thought into this. Um, so I guess starting with, you know, addressing parents, before you jump in and, and start building a gym at home, these are the things that I encourage you to consider. So let's start with the reasons why I don't think you need to buy gym equipment for the home. First and foremost, I think the most obvious you know, thing when it comes to home gym equipment is it's really expensive. Um, and instead of maybe investing your money into something like expensive gym equipment at home, what about considering spending that money on either private lessons with a professional coach, you know, a gymnastics coach, or even a certified mental performance consultant such as myself? Um, you know, there's there's other ways. If you have the means and the finances to, um, you know, take action towards helping your your athletes, um, those are the first couple things that I would consider before we before we consider the alternative. So, um, second thing I want to mention is. That equipment that you see commercially available online, um, that stuff takes up a lot of space. I mean, my goodness, the size of, you know, a gymnastics beam that you see in a gym, um, the size of a floor, you know, the size of these mats that these kids need, you know, bars, vault, like there's a reason why gyms require so much space um, and you, you need all that equipment, you know. Um, so just thinking about once you have the equipment in your house, what are you going to do with it when your athlete moves on from the sport or moves out of the home, you know, there's a reason why your, your athlete goes to a designated space, AKA the gym, uh, to train in a place where the equipment is meant to be. Gyms are designed with safety and liability in mind, um, both for the facility and for the athletes. Our homes are not designed to be a gymnasium. 
Um, so I think that's a really big reason too, um, is just considering the, the liability involved. If, what if your kid gets hurt? Um, I don't think any parent would want to feel like they were responsible for that happening, but I mean, that's also the nature of the situation. If you're, you're signing up for that kind of process, you know? Um, so my next little bullet point here, and, and, you know, this is obviously maybe a little more personal to my experience and what I know, um, who I've spoken with, but to be honest with whoever is listening here, um, I really don't know of a single successful athlete um, who has owned a gym at their house, at least in the long term. Um, so, for example, you know, I like the example of Simone Biles. You know, she ended up buying the gym and owning the gym that she trains at for a reason. And to me, it seems as though she wants to keep home at home and gym at gym. Even Simone Biles separates her time in the gym from home. And if you're willing, again, to go to the lengths of purchasing gymnastics equipment, um, what about investing in the gym that your athlete goes to? Invest in them as a business, um, and the reward will come back to you that way. Maybe volunteer to buy equipment for the gym, or volunteer your time to help clean the gym, work at the front desk, or um, you know contribute to the gym in that way, um, and maybe also invest in private lessons and support the gym staff that are trained for that job. You know. Um, and maybe you'll even end up getting a discount. Maybe you can negotiate your child's tuition if if that's something, um, you know, that's a concern for you. Maybe offering up, you know, maybe you buy the, the gym a piece of equipment and you get that same amount deducted off of your tuition. You know, I don't know. Find some level of negotiation if that's the route you want to go. If your gym is maybe lacking the equipment that you think would help them be successful, um, maybe that's a route you can take too. Um, my next bullet point here is, um, I think one of the more, you know, long-term, like bigger picture things that comes from potentially buying your athlete gym equipment. Um, I, I really do think that it can contribute to burnout. And I know that's the last thing that every athlete and every parent wants, you know, we don't want to contribute to burnout. Um, I think the people that I've known in the past that have bought gym equipment for their house, um, you know, they ended up burning out anyway, and then they were left with clunky, expensive equipment that they couldn't get rid of. And since they didn't need it anymore, I mean, they just didn't know what to do with it. And so again, I'm happy to eat my words if someone can tell me about a successful collegiate or professional gymnast who had a home gym for more than a year. And I'm talking like full on, full on equipment, not just one little piece of equipment. I'm talking like a full on gym. If y'all, if someone out there lets me know that someone has done this successfully, then I will, I will reevaluate. I'm totally happy with that. But um, going back to, again, this is like such on my mind right now because of these other, the other bullet points I mentioned before. But the other thing to consider when buying gym equipment for your athlete is the potential for injury. Um, it's a huge liability for a parent to shoulder the burden of a coach in their house. Uh, I think I can speak for, you know, I, maybe I can't speak for them, but from my understanding most parents that I work with when it comes to their athletes, they're not their coaches. Most parents are not coaches. So that means most parents are not qualified to coach or spot their child. Um, that's what the coaches are for. That's what they are trained for. So let the coaches do their job. Also, if you want your kid to start seeing you as a coach, that's another potential. And, that, and you know what? That's totally up to you. However, your role and your job in your kid's life is going to be seen as different. So Again, before taking this leap and this, seeing this as an investment, I want you to think of the psychological impact that that could have on your athlete if they start seeing you as both a coach and a parent. Um, how are you guys going to separate those roles? When, when does, you know, parent end and coach begin? Where, where is the cutoff? You know, it's a very, very tricky and potentially just unnecessarily painful thing to do. Um, again, I just don't, I don't see much net positive there again especially what if your kid gets hurt in your house how would that make you feel how would that make your athlete feel um it's just something to consider and so kind of piggybacking off of that concept and i know i briefly mentioned this um earlier but i think the concept of keeping the gym being for gym and the home being for the home is something i, I want to touch on again a little bit deeper so let me ask you just I, there's a couple questions I want to ask. So, does your child or athlete compete at home? No. Does your kid compete in a gym or an arena? Yes. So, if you want your athlete to be successful, that is where they should train. Then, 
don't make your home another training space for competition. It's going to most likely confuse your kid about how to compete safely and properly. Um, again, I think this maybe too much of a, a good intention isn't always a good thing, you know? Um, and also I think part of what comes with that too, sometimes unintentionally is, you know, it takes the fun out of practice. Home is meant for meals, sleep, homework, family time, relaxation time. Um, it's just, a, it's, that's what home is meant for. Um, if you want your kid to potentially become overwhelmed with their sport, potentially identify too strongly with their sport and not be able to move on and have a normal life one day, that's one way to do it. You know, um, do you want your kid coming to you as an adult one day wishing that you never bought them all of that gym equipment? Um, I would encourage you to think of their adulthood and the impact that overwhelming them with their sport might come to. Um, also thinking of just their relationship with fitness, health, competition, and exercise, it could potentially turn out unhealthy, you know? Um, and let's say, so like all of that being said, all of that being said, let's say you already beat me to the punch and you've already bought this equipment for your home already. On the off chance that your athlete ends up loving the fact that you have those things, what are you going to do when they get comfortable with you spotting them and using the equipment in your home and they don't want to go to the gym anymore out of fear or anxiety? What if they stop trusting their coaches to spot them and want you to be there with them in practice instead? So if this happens, you might as well have volunteered as a coach to be with them in practice anyway. Instead of having all that extra equipment in your home, you could have just purchased that same equipment, donated it to the gym, and become your kid's coach. You've just now ended up, you know, slowing down their process and unnecessarily complicating things by going the the, the workaround route, you know. Um, so if you have, again, if you have the means to buy this equipment and you have the time and the energy that you want to invest in helping your kid improve and you want to be there for every step of the way, again, why not just buy that equipment, give it to the gym and become a coach? I feel like if you're already going to go that route or, or you know what, heck, open up your own gym. If you're going to buy that equipment and if you have the space, like, why not buy a warehouse somewhere and fill it with, with all that equipment and build your own gym, make it your own business, you know? Um, if you're, again, I think if you're just going to go to that links and you have the means to do that, you might as well like fully invest, like full send it, you know? Um, so again, let's, let's now transition into what can we do as, you know, parents of athletes, um, what can you do with your time, energy, brain bites and, and money instead of buying that gym equipment exclusively meant for the home? Um, this is where I think, again, investing in a certified mental performance co consultant like me, a sports psychologist or a com cognitive performance specialist to help your athlete can come in, investing in private lessons and coaches that are trained to help your athlete overcome these challenges is probably a better use of, again, your time and money and your energy um, as a parent. So I, I really do believe that the, the challenges that your athlete is facing when it comes to, you know, confidence, uh, dips in, in, in confidence and fear, you know, these things can be resolved with professionals who've been educated on how to specifically overcome those roadblocks. So again, just speaking more to the private lessons, you know, spend extra time at the gym, either before, after, or outside regular practice hours, hire an outside coach. If the current coaches won't do it, there's, there's gotta be somebody that you can find in your town. Even if they have to drive for a while, there's gotta be somebody out there that um, would be willing to um, show up at a gym and, and work with your athlete. Um, heck again, mentioning the idea of just volunteering to buy equipment for the gym. If your athlete um, trains at a gym that doesn't necessarily have the resources you think they need and, and just donate it to them, volunteer to clean the gym after practice in exchange for a tuition break. You know, this is where you as a parent can get creative um, there, there's, there's just other ways that you can show care and investment and, and concern for your child, um, and for your athlete, um, outside of making your, your home, the, the next place to, to practice, you know? Um, so here's the other thing. If, if you're really, again, that concerned about your athlete's well-being and ability to overcome their dip in confidence, I suggest you sign up to volunteer or get hired on as a coach at your athlete's gym. Heck, like I said earlier, start your own gym. If you can go to those links and you have the means to do that, you know, if you're going to take it that seriously, commit to the process and at least try to do it right. Become a full-blown coach and start working as a volunteer for pay. 
um, or a discount at your child's gym if, if you're really truly that concerned about their future. Um, but keep the gym at gym and the home at home. Um, there's got to be some kind of separation there. Um, I think the other thing to, you know, circle back to um, and mention is, you know, encourage your athlete daily. Tell them that you believe in them and no matter what the outcome is, that they're still loved and cared about. Um, you know, maybe just take a second to to remind yourself, you know, how often do you remind your athlete that you support them no matter what the outcome of their performance is? Just, I just want you to think about that for a second. And instead of praising results, praise effort over the results. If your kid sees you buying equipment as a lack of confidence in them to achieve what they want to achieve, that could be a serious backfire to your plan and your, your, your good, well intentions to help. Um, so just think about, again, the psychological impact of your kid, you know, seeing you buying that equipment and putting it like building a gym at home. Um, it's, it's a really, really, it could be a really, really big, um, confidence, you know, killer if, especially if you haven't really had that, that really well thought out conversation with them. Um, so again, going back to the idea of, um, separating gym and home life, you know, one thing to try is, you know, stop grilling your kid right after practice, give them some time to process their day, let them come to you with issues. And if they don't trust you to listen to them, they won't come to you. If you're going to keep asking them questions, maybe something to ask them is if they had fun at practice rather than what they accomplished. Um, if you keep the questions focused on effort as opposed to outcome, outcome, they might tell you more than what you expected them to. And that's also remembering to keep the questions that you're asking them open-ended. Try to limit the yes, no's. Um, again, leave it open for them to process and tell you what they want to tell you. Um, and if you do that, the kid will, they will, you know, they'll share what they want to share with you. Um, but if you just, if you ask them, you know, the yes, no questions right away, you're not going to get as much information as you're probably looking for. So um, last couple of, you know, bullet points here is just remembering your role and your purpose as a parent. Um, obviously, you know, I feel like I'm pretty open about this. I, I can't speak to being a parent. I'm not, I'm not a parent of children. I know what it's like to have pets, but um, while I don't know what it's like to be a parent, my understanding of you know, if I think about my, my athletes as my children, you know, from what I understand the role of a parent to be is your, your role and your job is to provide them food, rides to and from practice, you pay their tuition and you give them love and hugs and emotional support. And, and that's pretty much the main, the main role as an athlete parent, you know, keep it simple. Let the coaches be coaches while you keep being their parent and their advocate. Your job as a parent is already hard enough. It's demanding enough, um, you know, so why make it harder on yourself by shouldering the burden of, you know, feeling like you need to go out and buy all this equipment, you know, to have a gym in your house, you know? Um, at, at the end of the day, here's other things to consider, you know, so support your athlete and vote with your dollars. If your current facility isn't supporting your athlete with a proper or safe equipment in, a, in an environment that's unproductive and unsafe to perform in, maybe it's time to look elsewhere or take other options instead of trying to force something that's not going to work. You don't have to shoulder the entire responsibility of your athlete's confidence. So if you commit and stick to your role and let the other members of your athlete's quote unquote village stick to theirs, um, things will, I think, work out a lot more productively and a lot quicker. Um, you know, delegate responsibility to the right people and your athlete will turn out just fine. They're not, I, I again, I don't think there's any like world-class Olympic level or, you know, level 10 or collegiate level gymnast that would say, oh, I wish my parents bought me, you know, more gym equipment so I could practice more at home. I just, I, I've never heard, I've never heard anybody say that. Um, and I'm sure if you, you know, asked, you know, you, the top gymnast that you can think of, I, I just can't imagine that they would say that, you know. Um, so even again, after all of that said, you know, be my guest, go right ahead and buy your athlete gym equipment and, and just see what happens. Again, I, I, I'm not trying to come on here and tell you like, tell you what to do. I know, again, I'm not a parent. I'm just a mental performance professional. Um, you know, I'm a CMPC. I just have my experience and what I know. Um, I'm not trying to like stop anybody, um, from trying to do what's best for their athlete and their family, but 
I just, again, I, I hope you can at least accept the consequences and the warnings that I've provided ahead of time. So I hope those of y'all that are listening or listening to this that are at the right time and just really considering, you know, the pros and cons of, of going through a process like this. Um, so just overall, I, I really think that the net positive isn't there when it comes to buying gym equipment for home use. Um, and if you're thinking about buying, buying it to help your child, I, I also want to say your heart's in the right place. I, I totally understand you want the best for your, your athlete and your child. Um, but I think the focus is just on the wrong thing, you know, focus on supporting your kid while they're in practice and, and at home within the realms of being a parent, right. Um, you might find that to be enough while leaving the extra stuff just completely unnecessary. And, and so I hope today wasn't too negative. I, I wish, you know, the parents, the athletes, the, the families of these, you know, developing, um, athletes, the, the best of luck. I want the best for everybody. I want everybody to succeed. I think there's room for everybody to succeed. And, and I just don't think it's necessary to go out and spend thousands and definitely hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on this equ equipment that's commercially available. I just think there's other alternatives. I don't think it's the end all be all. Um, I hope that I've shared with you just a couple of different ways to get creative and, and figure out a solution other than, other than that. Um, you know, I know this is kind of a tough topic. I feel like it might be a little bit controversial, um, at least my stance and just this topic in general. I know everybody can get kind of heated about it. So I hope I talked about this in a way that's, um, open and, you know, I know I stuck to my notes and so I'm, I hope I didn't sound too much like a robot or like insensitive. That's, that's not at all what I'm trying to get across. So I hope those of y'all that know me and listen to me can, can, like listen through that and, and just understand my why behind um, my stance on this kind of topic. So I guess with that being said, thank you so much for listening. Please check out my social media platforms. Everything is listed in the show notes in the description section um, of the platform that you're choosing to listen to this podcast on. So again, thank you for your time. I wish everybody the best of luck. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys next time.